What's really going on? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back. To our official 10th episode. Wow. Bang. What is this? X. Roman numerals 10. Cool. For cool story. the Fully Nuking Podcast. My name is Ben Gravy. I am joined today by Jay Verney. My partner in crime. Oh yeah, that's me. Partner Here's the thing. Crime. Here's the thing. This is the thing. Mm-hmm. We've been trying to do this every day. We do it like twice a week, maybe. I mean, it's better than nothing, but it's kind of hard to get you motivated to do it. Not going to yeah. lie. I'm always I mean, motivated. Are you? <laughs> to do a podcast? Yeah, because it's super easy. And Guys, I'm having trouble. I'm, I'm interested in what's going on there. Uh, okay, now it's higher. Um, but I'm always interested in doing it. Can we talk about these? Yeah, how bad they are. What's wrong with these? Things? I don't know. Why wouldn't they... they just put them like that? That'd yeah. be so nice. So nice. They like um, slowly fall. We changed up the angle of the camera a little bit. Oh, they get lower. Brought it more, uh, more personal. You know. Yeah, I didn't like the high angle. Um. So here's the here's what's going on. We are. Uh, so the day that we're actually, what is this day? What is today? What is this day? It's Saturday, April fourth. Third, fourth. Fourth. Damn, it's the fourth. The fourth of April. Yeah. So April Fool's blew by yet again. I didn't do anything for it I, we are in the biggest april fools of our lives i always miss it <laughs> um a couple exciting things that have been happening in the world of um jay Vern and and me um take it away what's been happening um wow i don't i you know so much we <laughs> said, <laughs> we have been hanging out a lot you know more than normal uh, we've watched a lot of TV shows, which we'll get into. Recap a few because, you know, I've gotten Ben into a few shows. He got me into a few shows. Um, I bought a Nintendo. Ben bought a Nintendo. It came off Amazon. Um, it came loaded with 620 games preloaded. Um, DuckTales wow. is not on there, so that's a problem. Uh-huh. I'm going to have to go online and buy the actual Nintendo Entertainment System and DuckTales 1 and 2. By far the best Nintendo games ever. Prove me wrong. Um, you can't. I like Nintendo 64. So that's my that's my that's my just, jam. Nintendo 64 just hits different. It hits better. No. Ah, okay. No. Um we've been watching a show called All American. I have successfully called at least 30 things about the show before they happen, and I missed one. Oh, so you but want to get right into what we're watching. The thing I missed, though, ended up being true, right? Yeah, the dad. The dad had cancer. No, yeah. What if people are going to watch it? They're not going to watch it. <gasps> Everyone go watch it. Okay, Including so- one of my big calls on the show was the fact that it was a CW show. Okay, so- and Jordan said it was a Netflix original. Okay, and well, I was like, Netflix- this has CW written all over it. I don't know, but I feel as though Netflix tricks you because this is like the third or fourth time I've started a show on Netflix. And I'm like, damn, this is definitely a Netflix original. They make it, you believe it's a Netflix original. They don't say like from the CW. They just say whatever. And this is literally like happened to me multiple times. Because how many shows actually have a better opportunity? Like, I feel like Shit's Creek never, ever would have been part of pop culture unless it went on Netflix. Well, yes, because it was a Canadian TV Nobody show. Nobody was watching that and no show. And one, no one has pop. It's the network that yeah. it's on and we don't have it. So like, yeah. And I do believe, yeah, Netflix the fact that they binge watch shows like yeah. you can watch them all like i don't want to watch i couldn't like at all american i love it i think it's really good but if i had to sit there and wait every week there'd be no way I would just if it was actually it. on cw with ads you'd never watch it no you i would never watch it and that was the but, thing with riverdale like i got really oh really God. into uh, well riverdale you got into the first like two or three seasons and then they started talking about witches and warcraft and all that weird warcraft. Dungeon, <laughs> dungeon, dungeon. dungeons dragons and worlds of warcraft <laughs> um seriously though, went to the shit. let's be real yeah let's be real all Americans good enough to keep you watching during quarantine. Oh, hell yeah. Otherwise? I mean, it would be a show on. that I would have like on in the background if it was just like a regular day. I will admit, I said this yesterday, there was two times in the show and I was like, wow, these CW guys are brilliant because they nail it. They keep you right at that perfect medium of, I'm into this, 
but I'm not super emotionally attached to it, but I kind of care about it. But like, it's not going to drive me over the edge because all the problems get solved like within an episode or two. Well, that's my problem. I can't deal with shows that like literally keep you hanging. Like, so I started um, Little Fires Everywhere, which is a Hulu original Reese Witherspoon. Hulu. And here we go. The drama of it. And like, I'm like wanting to yell at the screen and I know nothing's going to get solved. It's like a mystery. So like, that is just too much. It's too much for me. I like, like, I know this person did this. This person found out they did this, and then it's solved. Yeah. A whole um, season of not being solved. Woo! Or, like, Boardwalk Empire, like, literally started one way. Ended another. <laughs> it started at a certain point in these people's lives, and everything that happened yeah. was like this. Downhill, and then Nucky Thompson got shot at the end and died. So... The entire show, you're hoping for these people to find a little bit of redemption. Yeah. The only small bit of redemption on the entire show was the guy with the half face, and they kill him. Yeah. I was like, dude, if this guy gets out clean, and yeah, he did some terrible things. He killed a lot of people, but he always killed in self-defense or the defense of others. If he got out clean, I would have been like, all right, there's some justifiable like. But they don't do that in those type of shows because they show, I t- said that before, like they show how just how gnarly the lifestyle is. Like, yeah, you I You die guess. no matter what. If you're in the mob, you, you're done. You're done, though. You're done, though. You don't come out clean. Just like in All-American, pretty much don't come out clean because there's a lot of uh, gangs. I forgot the word. Yes. Bloods and Crips, you know? But right. it's like PG-rated Bloods and Crips. Yeah. <laughs> it almost makes you think it's not that big of a deal to walk Well, around. I said to the yesterday, like, I don't know, maybe I wouldn't mind, like, growing up in Crenshaw. And well, then I, it was like, I get was, the fuck. <laughs> well, I was looking at, this is a good. They make it look fun. I was looking at all these properties in Atlantic City. Oh, God. This, this guy. morning. And I was just telling Jordan about them because I love to dream of real estate. And uh, first of all, the Atlantic City taxes are outrageous, so it's kind of hard to like. Yeah, that's in. They, it's insane. But I, um, I, I mean, I want to buy another property some point here in the next couple of years. But Jordan was like, "You can't live in Atlantic City," and I, my response was, "But like, people from Beverly Hills <laughs> go to parties in Crenshaw <laughs> in All American, a TV show." <laughs> But you can't actually live in Atlantic City. Like, like, unless it's the veteran side of Atlantic City, which is closer to us, and like it's a little bit. It's your leg safe. is going crazy. I'm sorry. I shake when I'm like, bah. <clears throat> um, I, I kind of shake when I'm bah, too. <laughs> I had like one cup of coffee today. Um, Whoa! <clears throat> that was loud. Sorry, guys. So I, uh, I started out two days ago cutting down my coffee consumption because I was, I've, I've been, I've been committing to getting better sleep. And it's been working against me. My sleep for the past two nights have been, or three nights has been worse than ever. And I committed to getting better sleep. Um, so today I just went all in. I'm like five cups deep already. Well, I feel like if you were sleep, were you, were you sleeping okay with drinking that much coffee? Or have you never slept? I don't think I've slept good enough. I just don't think you're a good sleeper. Like some people have accepted. it. Like we were talking about our parents. Like yeah. my dad is not a good sleeper. Like he passes out at like six sometimes but like he's up at like two just like hanging out like i've seen him at three yeah (laughs) yeah like he's not a good sleeper so i just feel like like i'm a great sleeper and like you're just jealous it's really easy for me to get up at five or four or five in the morning and it's really easy for me to get up at like nine you know like or midday (laughs) i think girls or women are just better sleepers than. but as soon as we have kids like if i ever had a kid done never sleep again and that's that's the that's the I know some dudes that can really sleep, though, dude. Like, I think you have a lot on your mind. I think you should not be t- taking as much melatonin. I think you should go a week without doing melatonin and then use it to regulate. I've only regulate- done it three days. Okay. Um. So Fair there's then. apparently. Nah. So like, if you're big into um electronics, uh, screens, need- let's yeah. say LCD screens or whatever, computer screens, TV phones there's something that comes off of them called blue light and it drains the melatonin in your body and the melatonin in your body is one of the things that helps you get tired correct Mm -hmm. so they have melatonin capsules so if you're someone that works on computers a lot like me i edit constantly and i'm on my phone a lot first of all i should have blue light glasses to block it but i i've been off and on melatonin i've been experimenting with it 
it really doesn't help you get REM sleep, though, I swear. Like, rapid eye movement, proper deep sleep, Mm -hmm. you don't get it when you're on melatonin. That's why, like, the only time I've ever taken melatonin is pretty much because, like, I was struggling to fall asleep. Like, it wasn't about sleeping. It was just, like, I can't. It might be, like, I toss and turn to, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. I just want to have one day where I go to sleep and I wake up the next day. I'm like, what happened? That was such a deep sleep. Like, I'm literally, like, waking up, like, six, seven, ten times a night. Yeah. And then I wake up in the morning. I'm like, well, I've been up five times. So, like, (laughs) this is nothing new. You go to the bathroom a lot, too, at night. Yeah, I do. You drink too much before bed. I'm one of the – first of all, I drink a ton of water, guys. Um, And I'm one of those people who, like, if I lay down and I have to pee, like, that much, I can't get – I can't go to sleep until I pee, and then I'll do that like 25 times. <laughs> I'm so sleepy that I don't even know what's happening. I just fall asleep. I mean, I envy that in people. Mm. There's some people that just like pass out, like no problem. I'm like sitting there like, oh, man. Well, you know what I think has helped me? I forgot to email that guy. Now, you know what I think has helped me? My whole life, I you didn't care, so I'm just telling you. I'm listening. My whole life, I had to to go to sleep, I have to take out my contacts. Mm-hmm. And for me, as soon as I take out my contacts, I can't see. I'm blind as a bat. Literally cannot see this close in front of me. It triggers my mind to be like time for bed. Like, and I just pass out because I can't. Like, I, and I've put Jordan's glasses on, guys. It is a fate worse than so that. I'm I'd in, rather be waterboarded. <laughs> so I'm, in one, I have negative seven point five, and the other one just negative seven. So if so you guys legally know, blind. So if you guys are anything about glasses, like I cannot see. So I feel as though like that has helped me tremendously with sleeping yeah because like what am i gonna do what else are you gonna do exactly i can't see now i can't watch tv the thing for me is around 10 or 11 i shut my mind off and i'm like i doze into the perfect sleep and then by an hour later i'm up every night you're bad on your phone though for what no oh oh my god this guy lies sometimes i am all my words with friends games stack up right before bed this guy's a big gamer on his phone. Like, it's so weird. I deleted Tetris and I deleted Toon Blast. I just have words with friends going and I, I try to. Yeah, um, but you're still, it's like you're holding on, you know? You still are holding on to the game. There was a point when, like, I <laughs> felt like, there was a point I deleted all games off my phone and yeah. all bullshit apps, everything that wasn't 100% work. Uh huh. And I literally said to myself, until. I don't know. I was in a bad rhythm. I felt like with the okay. vlog and everything. Yeah, yeah. And I said, until I get back on track business wise, mm-hmm. I'm going to do that. And I was super strict about it. And then like two weeks later, what do you know? You know, I'm gaming again. I'm gaming again. So I don't know. That's, that's funny though. That that's your deal. Hmm. Um, all right. So, uh, I don't know your sleep schedule. You're just going to have to make it work. I sleep better on the couch. I need to get a nice big plush couch. Uh, okay, we bought a. <laughs> I bought. <laughs> okay, so you didn't. Did listen to this. Where I'm going to tell the story because Ben will what? tell it incorrectly. What story? Okay, guys. So when we got this house, mm-hmm. you know, we had no furniture. Like Ben didn't come with like a furniture. I didn't come with furniture, so we had to buy everything pretty much. Yeah. So the the our house is very very narrow. It's you know and very and pretty much very. It's just a very it's very small. chic. It's very small. You would say it's a. It's a step above a tiny home. <laughs> it's not. It's a Philly row home. Mm, it's 12 feet it's wide. It's bigger than Guys, a Philly. The house is 12 feet wide. Yeah, it's a Philly row my home. My aunt lives in a Philly row home and doesn't know this one. Okay. She has a bigger couch than us. No, and her house lot. is probably 16 feet wide. Yeah, like, yeah, it's nicer. It's bigger. Whatever. That four feet? Oh, my it God. It makes a big difference. Dude, imagine four feet on that wall right there. Ex- exactly. I'd be like, dude, I could fit a couch in here. Two dryers. Okay. So, yeah, it would be pretty big. And then, anyways... Imagine ben, a 24-foot oh wide house. Imagine just a normal size house. That's what we're trying to get at. Imagine a normal size house. Okay, so Ben said, the only requirement I have for the couch is that it fits these lengths, these measurements, and you can see the bottom. No, I wanted it six feet two of, of couch space, not of entire couch. Our couch is six feet two minus four inches. Benjamin, on I sent, okay, anyways, I sent this. I can't lay I sideways s- on our couch comfortably. I sent this man. 
so many couches. I was like, this one, that one. You can, like, he wanted to be able, th- I don't know why this was your requirement. He likes the peg, like, that there's pegs on the bottom. And it's fab. See in the bottom. Like, Which was a mistake because I should have just got a thing that covered up as much of this, this house as I possibly could. Exactly. So, anyways. We, we sh- should just buy sheets and float over everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. Uh, we got this couch from West Elm, and it's it, it's a nice couch. Shout out Max and his humans. Yeah, so uh, one of our friends like helped us get the couch. We went to Red Bank, picked it up at West Elm, and like I was excited because it was like we got a West Elm couch. But this couch is not an eight hundred dollars ev- with a discount. It's just not an everyday. I can literally carry this thing around. Put it that way. Yeah. Okay. I can pick it up myself. Yeah. It's- like, oh, did okay. you lose something under the couch? Here, I'll grab it. Just pick up the entire couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just, it just not a... Yeah. You're interrupting me! Uh, okay, it's just not a couch that you can do much of lounging on. We need... But we don't fit... A sectional doesn't fit. Or, like, something with, like, a... Like, you're not a sectional, but when it has, like, the couch and then the little thing. Like, we can't even fit that. So, All like, right. I don't know. We need... And let's be real. Like, I grew up in a... I grew up in a scenario. Like, I didn't move into this house until I was 30 years old. So, until that point, I lived at my mom's. I never had the opportunity to really lounge at my mom's. Like I did my editing. You know what I mean? You're the biggest lounger ever at your mom's. You slept on the couch. It's lounging. You had your listen, mom was like 20 Listen, couches listen. There was house. no time when I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch TV and lounge. Oh, uh, well, you you don't have I'm TV. I'm not a lounger. You didn't so have TV. I thought when I had my own house, I was gonna come here and not be a lounger. Turns out everybody's a lounger. It's just that now like, we're I just didn't so. have the opportunity to be a lounger in my other situation because it wasn't as freeing you know it's what i mean like if i put my legs up for one second my mom was going to vacuum underneath them it's not even you know? that though you didn't have tv i made ben get tvs and you know i grew up with tv ben did not so, so I, I feel like ben is finally <clears throat> living his truth his childhood so his dream until i'm until i bought this house and moved in i never had cable in a house in my entire life that, that actually makes me so that sad that goes for two houses i've lived in in pennsylvania Two houses I've lived in in New Jersey and a house that we own in Florida, that my parents own in Florida. Never, ever did I have cable television. And it's game changing. You enjoy it. Don't lie. It's great. Exactly. That's what I don't understand. But But I also, I've been pretty frivolous during quarantine. I purchased HBO on demand for Jordan's sake. And then she didn't use it one single time. I wouldn't. So. I have all these shows I want to watch. Ben doesn't want to watch them. I watched Boardwalk Empire and The Outsider just because I knew it was 15 bucks for me. So, that was a good deal. Got so $7.50 well, per show. Well, we're here show. for another month, buddy, so I think it was a good choice. <laughs> so me and Jordan made a song. Um, Wait, but Jordan I'm still on the- Jordan pushed me. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go, go. Finish. No, no, I no. want to hear it. It's over. I forgot. I want to hear My it. My mind went boop, boop. So we went to West Elm. No, no, I'm all right. We're just going to have to get a new couch. So we made a song. Yes. And I think we should rearrange the living room. It's just personal opinion. Should we, but we, the cable I think we on. should put the couch bang over there in a big one. Okay, that's fine. Where the fine. Bohemian is. 100%. Guess and the what? The Bohemian can come up here or something. When like, this, imagine podcasting on the Bohemians. When this quarantine's over, we can do that. We, can, right. do, we can live your dream. I'm changing Plus, I'm the house. I'm going to rip around. out this. No, God, plus we're knocking the house down. Darn. When this is over, guess just, what? This, this house is really, really annoying. Okay, but go on. What were you saying about I'm going to rip out the ceiling of the whole house. Yeah, I know. Because there's like four feet above here. These ceilings are like seven foot two, which is like, I don't know, in 1911 when they built this house, is that how tall people were? <laughs> no, know. people were like Because like, I like a 12 foot ceiling would be like, that would be mm-hmm. like, wow. There's a, there's a lot of things. This is his first time buying there's a lot of things that Ben didn't believe that one would need in a house. But he kept thinking I, was I just got on. I got on the island. <laughs> I was the last guy to get on the island for under two hundred. That's Ben's claim to fame. That's what I. That's what I'll be telling my grandkids. Hey, boys! <laughs> when I sell this house for like two point five million, boys! Oh, you know I was the last guy to get on the island for under two hundred. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I mean. So we made a song. We wrote a song. Yeah. Um, I wrote it. I wait, okay, let's Jordan just Jordan very, the very it. much um ben, encouraged me to, to write the song and she wrote she actually said the song should be called F the Rona and then this this write it in your style. That's what she told me. And I was like, All right. So I wrote it and it was a banger and everybody loved it. So thank you guys. Stoked. You can find it on my Instagram. 
at Ben Gravy Two Wise. Uh, it was fun, good times. Um, another thing that happened. Do you have anything to say about that song? No, I I, I just it was a good song. And you wrote it. I didn't write it, but I will take credit where credit is due. And I but I was coming down the stairs and Ben goes, what should I, how should I start this song? And I said, just you base it off this. Fuck the Rona. And how come every time you want to say something, I can feel it? Because you talk and talk and talk and don't look at me. And I just give you death because eyes. that's what podcasting is all about. Uh, yeah, you but, taught me how to podcast. No, I made him You said listen. you just have to talk a lot. <laughs> you just have to talk a lot, but there You're, should be a little bit The girls bit that more... you watch talk over each other the whole time and they rip. I love them. They're good. Um, go ahead. But I feel like, okay, like we're still getting used to the podcasting. Should we do a podcast where like I'm kind of the, I'll bring up the topics, you foof, and I like just, do you know what I mean? And you bring me back down to earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I should be bringing up the topics, you kind of go on a rant, and then I'll like add in my kind of two cents, and then we'll go back. Well. Then like, how come I'm here yet bringing up another topic? Because you keep bringing up topics without guys. We have face masks. We were gonna, we we bought these to, to sell. sell them. Um, we ordered them in January. Yeah. No. End of, no. Yeah, end of January because I ordered them before we went to Puerto Rico. But we thought about ordering them in September, right? Is that when Surf Expo was? No, January, Bubby. Oh, January. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, January. But I mean, January. Before the corona for us, but apparently the corona was around in January, so. Um, yeah, so I just, I don't know what's right, what's what's okay, because they actually don't, pr- they protect you where, like, we're now being told to wear masks when we go out. And even Let's if, talk about masks. Even if it's not, like, um, the big masks that, like, you know, really, N95. really. N95. N95s or any of those type of masks, they're telling you to wear some protective shield, w- w- at, if it's fabric, if it's X, Y, or Z. Which is funny, because... Two months or six weeks ago, let's say, when we were traveling, I was traveling back and forth, and then we, I went on a trip down to the Caribbean, and then I came home, and then I, we went down to Puerto Rico. Yeah, I was wearing this mask, and I was too. And then, I, and then, we were. Then, then the CDC released a statement, right? Well, yeah, and I won't even say how I feel about them. The CDC released a statement saying that there's no point to wear a mask; it's not going to help you. It so, only helps people. It only doesn't protect anybody it protects someone from spreading the virus that has it so my and jordan's first response to that was okay okay the cdc says assume you have it yeah and then they say don't wear a mask it's not going to do anything yeah but that's a contradiction yeah i mean it's completely um irresponsible for the government and the cdc to say hey, like masks aren't going to help the situation. They yeah. were trying to cover their own asses because they didn't have enough masks and protection for like their first responders. But guess what? If a month ago they told us, hey, if you wear a fabric over your face, you wear your damn turtleneck over your yeah. face, something like that is going to help you. So just wear it out. So our first thought was like we were getting on the plane and um, we had them on. And I remember we were talking about the CDC thing. And I was like, but if you sneeze or cough and you have this on, it's going to stop the stuff from spreading into the air and that can help other people even from getting it, it. Even it goes like, th- like say like, I don't know how far this would protect, but say but we more do- than exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then my whole thing, people were telling me a lot like, Oh, you don't need to wear that. That's stupid. It's like, to me, common sense is, Hey, if I touch this microphone and someone with vi- the virus just had it. And then I touch my face or touch my mouth. Like, that is how I could spread it to myself. So if I have yeah. something blocking that, that's just one more protect. Like, even if and that's yeah. just And it. because of the, the coronavirus, I, I stopped biting my nails. And yeah. this mask was the first deterrent. Because I remember I was on the plane with Ryan Mack, and I was like, dude, I'm not biting my nails because I have a mask on. Exactly. I, and, s- I uh, slept with that mask on home from Puerto Rico. So what happened was the CDC released that statement, and then we're wearing masks, and everyone's hitting us up on Instagram going, well, why do you have a mask on? It doesn't do anything. You're dumb, blah, blah, blah. And we are like, Jeez, oh man, what is the, what is going on? Well, because and it's it's sad that people do take everything like exactly exactly because to me it's like all interpretation because if I look and do research and I see co- country people in Asia and people in other countries that wear masks every day, not even yeah. when this virus is happening, because they live in such close proximity to each other yeah. because diseases spread easily. <clears throat> you know why is that so? And I feel as though because of our society, our society is told yeah. like. No, You're man. a weirdo if you wear a mask. Yeah, totally. And in Asia, 
you're normal and smart and protecting yourself from yeah. harm if you wear a mask. Um, so I think there's a lot of like, um, what's that word? Like scrutiny. People look at you weird. Yeah. I don't know what the word is, but I'll probably think of it once we're done. Um, the other thing too is like, uh, I, I put in my vlog today, like about all the vitamins and guys, like I take like vitamin C, vitamin D. Um, I ordered zinc. I ordered a couple other things. I can put a list down in the description cause I don't know everything we have, uh, B complex vitamin, just a bunch of good stuff. Yeah. Black elderberry, like just good stuff. That's good. Like naturally good for your immune system. And like, I'm not putting that in my vlog to be like, Oh, look guys, I'm a God. Like I know all this stuff. I'm putting it in there because like that could potentially, maybe you don't know about vitamins. You know what I mean? Like I know everyone took Flintstone vitamins when they were kids, but like until I got a little bit older and I looked into it, like vitamins are really beneficial to you. Um, and I know there's, there's yeah. people online even that try to like that articles that say like vitamins are like a waste of money, but I'm a hard believer in vitamins. And if that's helping me, that's, it's good. Like, at the very least, it's setting my mind at ease, yes, which is helping my immune system because I'm not yeah. as stressed out. I was literally about to say, like, even if it's just a placebo effect, like, yeah. I believe that if you think it's helping your body, your body's already that much healthier. That was, I mean, that's me on a regular basis. Like, if I eat a certain way, even if it's not quote unquote, like, diet food. Yeah. But if I feel in my <clears> brain that it's actually, like, it actually is or something, like, I... I do like slowly lose weight. It's really a weird, like well, it's my, a placebo effect yes, or whatever. My thought process in life is like, if you have your program and you stick to your own program, like you're going to get results. Yeah. And, okay. and it might come down to the simple fact that you believe it and you will it into existence. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's just reality. Like if you're cooped up in the house, watching CNN, worrying about what's going to happen next, you're going to be stressed out. You're not going to be getting any sun. You're not going to be getting your heart rate up and Ooh, you're going to be killing your immune system. If yeah. you're going for your daily run so while social distancing, getting sun on your face, taking vitamins, drinking water, keeping it healthy, getting the proper amount of sleep and not sitting around the house all day, then when you go to bed, tossing and turning, you know what I mean? It's just going to be better for you. And, and you're getting your mind off of it as well because yeah. you, you're on your program. And that I believe that that is that's the way to a healthy life. Like you can't just like think about stuff and sit on the couch and wait for things to happen. You got to go do them. Yeah, I agree. I had so much to say and then you just, <clears throat> I just forgot, but, um, go ahead. I don't know. I, go I, ahead now. no, I completely agree. I agree with like the mask thing. I agree with like, I, Oh, like what I was thinking today is just that like, you know, how crazy is it that like everyone believed that we weren't supposed to be protecting ourselves with masks and what if like i mean we can't play the what if game because like there's a lot of what ifs in the yeah, world today but like totally. it's like damn if we wore masks damn, just homie. a month ago like we were traveling and we wore masks but there was a lot of people that weren't and there was a lot of people going to subways go to sports games like the, all this stuff was still happening a month ago yeah and like if we were <clears> just <throat> told hey like wear masks wear masks or like um you know, when you go into a sports arena, like there should have been like hand sanitizer and there should have been different precautions because like, we didn't know where this was going. And, you know, none of that happened. And now like a month later and we're like stuck inside for another month and people are dying and that there's like 200,000 cases more. Probably a quarter million as we speak. Yeah. And like that's like, my hand smelling bleach from cleaning. I can stuff. smell so much bleach. And, you know, it's insane. I keep getting whiffs. Um, but I don't know. It's just, it's just sad that like, you know, we're, we're told one thing and I don't believe what we're being told is helping us. And, you know, they keep being late. It's like, oh, well, we're a month too late with well, the masks. That's, that's the thing Sad. too, like in life that is wild because like I'm a big promoter and a big person who is behind like self-realization, like go do it for you. Like talk about my lower back problems. Mm -hmm. I started going to the chiropractor on my vlog. Of course, there's tons of people being like, why would you go to a chiropractor? They're quacks. Mm -hmm. But guess what, guys? It fixed my back. Yeah. He taught me stretches that I can now maintain my back with no pain. Mm -hmm. And then I go every one every month or two and get adjusted and it fixed my back. Yeah. So why wouldn't I go to the chiropractor? Yeah, exactly. For so, me, it worked. Exactly. So there's just a lot. I don't know. And now we're stuck 30 more days. Stuck with a list of, of podcast questions. 
How we pass the time. See, but you're... <laughs> what did I do? Annoy me. I, I this annoy is not, Yeah, because you, you did everything out of order. No, I didn't. Go ahead. No, I'm over I want to hear about We're this. off of it. These are just different podcast questions that I have. You're not allowed to see my podcast list. You All right, well, you're supposed to be posing the questions, and then I come, oh, and then I come in with the heat because I'm Mesta Yoda. I know no. everything. Um. Anyways, you just destroyed everything. Dude, what's going on right now? Stop doing that. It's um, hurts my ears. I don't know. Where's I D-Bag? wanted to go. No, I wanted to go into our depth. Eh, you're annoying. <laughs> Okay, this is our last podcast. It was the one that was what we're looking forward to after quarantine. Oh, comments. And I hey. wanted to, I wanted to talk about some of our comments. Um, but I, I didn't like like screenshot any of them, which I should have done. Um Van Gogh Unchained. Jay Verdi, I like that. <laughs> Somebody named it really. Um, I don't know. Now I don't know. Dude, this is so good. D bag is trying to tell us that uh, D bag's trying to. He sent a picture from Cloudbreak of him because D bag went all the way to Cloudbreak and didn't get barreled. Cloudbreak is like a world class. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then uh, Perry Perry said, "I'm convinced you didn't make a barrel." Why are all these shots of you when you're about to stall or just pull out of it? And d bag says, ask Dave T. I ripped. And then he sends a picture trying to trick us into believing it's him. He has long hair. That's not d bag. And it's the guy that was driving the boat. Oh, my. And then he gosh. finally admits down here, my captain got the shot. <laughs> Ridiculous. And Perry you. said, not you. And then d bag said that Perry's jealous. And then he <sighs> finally said, F, I blew it. Wow. So, yeah, let's get on to these comments. I gave you some time to find the Wait, dream. I got distracted by your comment. I don't know. So, Jamie Hagadom. 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 I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Hagadomus. Jordan, tell us about you. What are you into? I have one of your friends on the podcast. Do you plan to learn to serve? Okay, so one of my friends on the podcast, I would like to do that. I feel like I have a few friends that would actually be pretty good at this. Um, we'll see. You and know, that's like funny. It's but- got to clear. Management has to clear it. So, we'll see. I mean, once it's all over, I think we're going to have a lot of guests on the podcast, so yep. that's going to be good. And then, Who would um, you guys like to see us interview? And if you want to see us interview anyone that kind of seems like it, they're out of reach, you guys are going to have to bombard them. So that's the only way to do it. Yeah. And, and uh, maybe we'll have, to, we'll have to get a new uh, podcast facility if we're going to have visitors. No way. <laughs> okay. Um. So anyways, thanks for the question. And what do I plan to learn to serve? I have... Surf multiple times. I wouldn't say I plan to learn to surf because I technically know how to surf. I just don't do it well. Well, um, you can surf. I can surf. And I, I fully want to surf during this quarantine <clears throat> if, like, our beaches don't close because I'm like, I have a wetsuit that will is perfect, like, temperature for this. Yeah. And then, the wetsuit's the perfect temperature. And then, <laughs> the water's the perfect temperature. And I feel as though it's not – it's like no one's out. So like, why not? Yeah, why not? And like, I don't know. It's something Truly. to do. Let me check the tides, actually. Oh, my God. And then they want to know about you. Oh, wow. Tommy Gunn. No, <laughs> he said, who are you? What do you do? What do you want out of life? No, Tommy Gunn said, Jay Verney is coming across as a very materialistic person. Kind of making, making, kind of making look at her in a different way. Bigger house, nicer house. Big dog, you should be blessed you have a house. And being on an island at the Jersey store. Um, so Tommy Guns, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Um I I will say that like I always I always tell Ben that I sh- I don't believe in settling. So if I say I do want a bigger house or a bigger this, it's it's not really the magnitude of the bigness because like I actually love small houses and any house that I've looked at in the past like couple months to like move into for me and Ben is just a more realistic and house that would make sense for us um we have a lot of stuff between the two of us and like this isn't a house that we can like grow into so I think that's really more it's not we can grow out of it well it's like this isn't a house for the rest of our lives it, well it I didn't can't be, so. first of all guys I f- I got to the point um Instead of, so I made an executive decision when I was like 24 years old that I was going to start saving money. And then like two years later, I had my injury 
uh, my knee injury and I pretty much spent every dollar that I had um, on that. Um, thankfully for me, I had, when I was working in video production, I had invested, um, about like 35 grand into a, uh, another property over mm-hmm. in ocean city. Um, so instead of moving out and getting an apartment, um, I decided to stay home and save my money again after my injury. Um, so I did that for a few years and everything kind of came together at the, it was literally a perfect storm. I was trying to sell this apartment for <laughs> two years, mm-hmm. maybe, and uh, the guy next door finally bought it, um, and he bought it for this every every dime that we put into it, and um, I got back like thirty five grand. I probably, you know, at the end of the day, I probably put forty into it. I got back like thirty five, um, and I, so I had that money, and I had a big savings, and this house popped up out of nowhere. We were looking. In Summers Point, we looked in Linwood. I put an offer in in a house in Summers, two houses in Summers Point, one in Linwood. I had another one that I wanted to buy. My right, the Linwood one fell through the same day. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we were driving around in circles and we did we get pizza? No, oh, I don't. I wasn't here. I don't no, I, you were in the car with me. With this house? Yeah. No, I don't remember. And I've, I was looking on Zillow and I was like, Margate, Margate, should I look in Margate? It's too expensive, blah, blah, blah. Bang, this thing popped up on Zillow for $168,000, okay? I wow. called the guy on the spot. I, I said, fuck Zillow. They always screw me with the worst real estate agents because what happens is someone lists it, Zillow gives you someone else, and then there's two guys fighting over the mm-hmm. the percentage. So th- if you go, if you find the house and then find the people that listed it, go straight to them, they get the entire 7% or whatever it is. Three, I don't know how much it is. Um, six, I think. So they get the whole percentage. So if you go straight to them, they're going to be the ones who are going to bank sell it to you because they don't have to deal with another realtor. So, um, I called the guy and I said, dude, can we please meet? I want to meet. Um, we came here. This thing was a dilapidated shithole, mm-hmm. literally, but it was in Margate and I walked inside and I, it was literally falling over, which it still is. And I said, I'll take it full price. Um, so I, I ended up paying a little bit more, like two or three grand more, um, plus closing costs, plus getting the mortgage, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on and on. Yeah. But, uh, we pretty much got this house at the tipping point. Like when we needed to, we were either going to go rent something and spend a bunch of years and a bunch of money doing that or get in this thing, fix it up. And that's what we did. And we got in here and it was a great price. And the day I got it assessed, reassessed, I, I made money and it's just, it's been a solid, um, it's been a solid process. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this is definitely not like the house that I see spending the rest of our lives in by no means. Yeah. And um, I think that's all I was just trying to get across Ben just went into the whole story. But, but me like- and Jordan have the, a really New Jersey and sense of humor. Um, like our sarcasm is pretty cutthroat. Yeah. And I think sometimes that doesn't come across right on the vlog and people think that like, no, it's just me. Pretty much just people think that about me. We're either arguing yeah. or, or like, but there's been like, times when people are thinking that I'm being a dick. Yeah, no, it is. I, I just take it a little more personal. And then like, yeah. yeah, no, you're right. So like our humor is like really pretty gnarly. Like that's just how New Jersey is. Like yeah. I, I've heard people call it the sarcasm capital of the world. Like we're pretty, we're pretty gnarly. So our envelope's very open. Yeah, like, so like when I say something about the house, like like okay, today I was talking about how small the house is for a couch. Like this is something like, we're letting you guys into like kind of a little bit more of like our personalities talking just openly. Words with friends, Anthony and, Crum, and we're just this is how we normally <clears throat> talk to each other. Like I say, yeah. oh, this house is too small. Like we can't have a couch, and like genuinely, Ben feels the same way as me. It's just that like sometimes on the vlog or like through this, like he might let me speak and then not really comment. And I feel like sometimes you guys don't realize that like we have a banter like that. Yeah. Oh no. It's full banter. Like I can legitimately go, Jordan can show me something and I can legitimately say like, it's weird because when you're with someone, you have an ongoing joke with them. Like our Mm -hmm. entire life is an ongoing joke. Like she could show me something and I could go, that's fucked. And she'll get that I'm thinking it's funny by saying that's fucked. And not actually fucked. And yeah. not actually thinking it's fucked. Like, it's really interesting. Um, and then it's funny to see it, like, come across in the vlog. And then um, some people think it's gnarly. But, like, we're literally just fucking around. Like, we are the most... 
I think we have more fun than anybody. Like yeah, literally just, anybody. And it, it's, and the, and whatever, it, you know, that comment is whatever. It's your opinion, but I feel like we are totally, um, I'm totally grateful for whatever situation I'm in. And, you know, I just feel like it's funny when people just keep saying like, oh, you're this or you're that. It's like, damn guys, like, do you really think Ben would be with someone that's just like, or like vice versa. If Ben was the way that you, some people think he is, or I was the way like, damn, like we must suck. Like, <laughs> ben, like we're, it just doesn't make any sense. Like we're not those people. And I don't know. I, I, there's another comment, like not to bring the negative ones to light, but like, oh, I, I haven't read any of these comments. And, um, Vanessa Blue, <laughs> Jordan is not a very grounded person. She, I don't know what I said in this podcast. Damn, guys. She pretty much is a spaz attack. Ben is a freaking saint for putting up with her needy, whiny personality. And thank you, Swell Chaser and Catherine, because you guys have my back. Well, you know what's funny? Which is funny, because I'm pretty sure Swell Chaser. What's funny is um, when I met you, and I started hanging out with you, and you yeah. started coming across on the vlogs and stuff, JP... JP O'Brien, one of my uh, good buddies, he said, he was like, I forget what he said, but he was like, he said it was funny. Like, what do he you mean? was like, I just wouldn't think that you would go for a girl like that. Yeah. yeah. Because like how he perceived it as like, because Jordan likes designer stuff. She has Gucci bags. You know what I mean? Like, so, like very stuff that would make you seem maybe shallow from the outside. Mm -hmm. But then like JP met you. And he was like, wow, she's way different than I thought. Yeah, I'm like, Cause like guys, it's really, I'm pretty down to earth. It's funny because like think about like what actually Jordan's been through, like traveling on planes, like filming me for hours on end, staying at shitty hotels. Not so shitty these days, but yeah. you know, you we went, work you went through the racket. Yeah. Like my terrible Toyota 4Runner. Yeah. Like me not being able to afford to do anything in the beginning of our relationship. You know what I mean? She fully stuck it out, like full commitment. And it's funny. It's just funny to see like the perception because it's not, mm. it's not reality. And, um, and even if it isn't like, I just, I don't apologize for liking nice things. <clears throat> I think well, you can like whatever you want. Exactly. Right? And I feel like everyone, everyone has their advice. If it's going out to eat or having your fancy coffee once a day or, you know, buying something like you want to buy yourself a motorcycle, you want to buy yourself a boat, you want to buy yourself all these things like that's all materialistic. Well, but because mine's like a handbag, it's like she's she is different. Like that is it's like, dang, guys, you know, fashion's like one of the number one things in the whole world. Like everyone, every design that you're wearing right now is because somebody in the fashion industry put that out there, even if it was years ago, like everything trickles down like fashion is art and all that stuff and i can get into like the whole thing but i'm not materialistic and i like fancy things and i like things that look pretty because it makes me happy but you also like things from home goods too i love and i love things from like i'm a very balanced person and you also support small time this artists. is this is target you know what i mean but i have like Target. this is Target. you know i got this for ten dollars and but yeah and i do like i bought stuff the other day from a, a store called house of lucky in Lava at New Jersey because I felt bad. Like we're all struggling. I'm gonna buy something from a store instead Look, of buying like from Nordstrom. Yeah, like um so well like how you could how deep do you want to go with that whole thought process of like um material not materialistic, but like I forget another word you said when you were talking, but I was thinking about like think about like surfing. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, who does surfing benefit? Yourself. The person that's doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much. Like, yeah, you buy from a surf shop, maybe, or you support like a local shaper. But I'm saying like the act of surfing. Yeah. Just yeah. the, it benefits the surfer. Yeah. And it benefits people around me because it puts you in a good mood. But at the end of the day, like it really benefits the surfer. So like, um, and I always put surfing like, like I would say, oh, tragic flaw. Is that what you said? No. I would say a flaw of mine would be putting surfing like all the way up here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like everything else I put down here until surfing's done. And then I come back to the rest of my life. And I'm lucky enough to have made surfing my business. Yeah. But like if if I didn't, like, dude, that's a, that's a crazy thing. Like I put surfing up here and I'm like, I can't rest until I get done my surfing. And then I'll go back to like life. Yeah, 100%. That's how you, you know? are. And I've accepted that. But again, in materialism, it's like, it goes down so far as to like, 
I get frustrated when people, yeah, like if you said like, look, I remember years ago when I first met your family, they like, your dad made fun of my Gucci bag. And it's just like, it's funny. He because, loves like, Gucci. Exactly. exactly. But it's not even that, like, I don't care about that because it was funny and like, we were just like all laughing. Yeah. But it's like, I, why is supporting a company like that or like a company like any <clears> different <throat> than going and buying something? Like, I just don't. Well, the funny we're thing. We're all I, supporting and we're all keep giving people jobs. Like. The funny thing I can say, let's talk about this. Um, so when I met you, people would say like, oh my gosh, that thing, that that bag, that belt. Oh yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah, like why do you? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. And then like, it's funny that like a random person would even know what a Gucci bag is. Cause I, I have heard of Gucci from rap songs, but until I met you, I never knew anything about it. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny like that my dad would even be ripping on your Gucci bag because like, how does he know? You know what I mean? Like, There's so many. It's, it's like, stereotypes too. Like I, I and whatever I've accepted it, and like I'm I'm happy with who I am. So like that's fine. But it's just funny that that's people really really get on me for being materialistic, and I don't know. I just want to defend myself because I'm I'm really just. I got Ewok socks on. Yeah, I'm really just normal. But thanks, guys. Thanks for thanks thanks, thanks, thanks for, for actually the kind of content because we thanks for the stoke. It's good, you know. I it, um, I here's it. a fun fact. My dad busted the other day busted who busted him my mom no. i wasn't there you were there this is like months you ago texted me about day. it I wasn't my there. dad had a walk-in closet when he was a kid yeah when you my parents me met he had a walk-in closet full of burberry hell yeah i'm not a burberry <sighs> fan but that's hot. that's how he knew about the gucci so here's the thing cliches are cliches for a reason anyone talking about your gucci either has it themselves or wants it Takes well, these one, people weren't talking about my Gucci. Takes but one to no I'm a, one. I'm, I'm whining. I'm, I'm saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. Takes one to no one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, we go back to the point that I've never left a negative comment. Yeah. I've had thoughts. Oh yeah. I mean, it's just a normal human but, nature. Like, I think human nature. There's jealousy. Like I'm not completely. I'm really good. Yeah. Like I don't get jealous of people, but like, I think there is, like, no one is completely. You can't not get jealous, like mm -hmm. human beings. You know what I mean? Like it's just part of human nature. Like everybody does. But like I think the the part of maturing is like not acting on jealousy or hatred or anger or like And you can't also not what's like the word like you can't I think most humans, unless you are literally like the idea of perfection in which no one is, you can't look to outside objects as if a house, food, a car, your job, all these things to make you feel whole. So like when people like, yeah, you can say that I want a bigger house, but who doesn't? Like, let's just get down yeah. to the real, like, let True. does, is everyone satisfied with how they live? And but, if you are more power to you, but I just don't believe people are. I believe everyone wants better for themselves. Well, of course, once I bought this house, I, I walked, we fixed it up. Got it to perfection. You know, we got it to the point that it's at. Yeah. We walked in. I started making food, kicking it back, watching TV. I was uploading videos. I was like, damn, I got a house. And yeah. then I'm looking around like, man, can't wait to get my next house. Yeah. Like, it's going to be sick. It's going to be yeah. perfect. And I think that's totally the human condition. Exactly. And that's why like, I feel like it's funny when people fault someone else for it. When I bought the Forerunner, or not the Forerunner, the Dodge Pro Master, I got in it and I lived the dream and I built it out and I, I finished the whole thing and I stood in there for a second. And I was like, this thing's fucking sick. Man, do I wish I had a roof I could stand in. You know, I should have bought the bigger one. Why didn't I? Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're like, damn, like I wish I had a car to drive. Or like, you didn't, yeah. it's, just, it's just normal. And I don't know. I just think it's. I think, well, I mean, if you don't want more though, what's the point? You got to move on to something. Yeah. But if you're totally content, dude, hallelujah. And I think people are content. This, but I'm saying there's always something that people grasp to make them feel better. But yeah. No well, one is just sitting here like. Here's the other thing too. If you were such a god. Yeah. That you, you wouldn't comment. You'd never leave a nasty comment on YouTube. Because you'd be totally full and whole inside well, but of Well, also because you wouldn't even your mind couldn't even go to that level. Yeah. If you were fully content with your life, your mind would never go to the level of, hey, I'm going to hate on this person now. Yeah. 
instead, like when you're, if you're going to write an, uh, a hate comment, yeah. you might want to just think for a second and be like, why would I do that? And hey guys, like hate comments really do like affect humans. Like it affects me and like, and it affects Ben. And I know there's been comments where Ben's been up, like actually upset and like thought about it for, and like, I know that a lot of people think like, A, we don't see them or B, like, oh, how could it really affect them? But the other funny humans. thing is too, like, um, so whatever. It's one of those. Sometimes it, they come from people that you kind of know or like know who they are or like yeah. you've had interactions with. And it's funny how like people flip flop. But, uh, whatever. Yeah. Oh, God. Shouldn't, um, have, shouldn't have read the comments on today's uh, podcast, but sorry. Um, no, but I think it's good to talk about. I think it's it, it's what's happening. There's nothing else going on. <laughs> <laughs> so just a bunch of hate comments <laughs> no no people have been really really nice and really really supportive um and everyone's been like really uh, mostly good i can say that the quarantine is is actually kind of fun um like because we got to see a different side to society for sure yeah you know what i mean like we really got to see and um social media like at the end of the day is such a good thing you know what i mean like it spreads information so fast I mean, there's mi misinformation flying, but if you want to sit here and think that there's not misinformation flying on the news, yeah. you're tripping. So, like, yeah, social media is just like, oh my god, it's a saving grace of this quarantine. Epic thing. If that, we didn't like, have, so guys, think about if we didn't have social media. I imagine if we were just AOL screen names still. Gnarly. Our life would it would be totally different. Oh my god, it would be crazy. Social media. Thank God there is social media. You can think about it like this though. Without social media. I don't watch the news. So without social media, I wouldn't even know that there was a virus. <laughs> Somebody would have came up to me and been like, you have to did you hear about the virus? I'd no. be like, what virus? No. You would go like, to the store and be like, I'd be like why is El Slamo closed? You know, like, <laughs> El Slamo. Well, El Slamo's not actually closed. But you know what I mean? Like, why is the beach actually, closed? Actually, it's closed. Because I would have drive, <laughs> <laughs> I would have driven up north or something to go yeah. surf and be like, be like why is the beach you? closed? Yeah. So like, you can look at, thank God for social media, two ways because I pretty much would have had this past month and yeah. I would have been like, man, there's a lot of people surfing. What's going on? Uh, I like, yeah, like, why is no one at work? <laughs> I don't know. That is so true. I don't know. What's um, something on social media that you, I have mine, but what's your, like, what has been your kind of like go to to like make you laugh or make you feel better? Anybody? Like a person? Just a person, a page, something that you've been Words like. with friends? Words with friends. So, like, that's what's been keeping you, like... I do words with friends. And then, I mean, I've been watching all the boys' vlogs and, and Instagrams. Like, Jamie yeah. and everybody. Um, uh, well, because I, I was going to go into, like, I genuinely look forward to, like, the the pizza guy. Yeah. So, totally. like, every day, like, I genuinely, like, go on to his Soul President at Soul President. And um, he does pizza reviews. Probably, like, half the people with that listen to this will know. Um... And I'm like genuinely excited every single day and the morning toast. So like there's two things that like every day that I've watched or have listened to to like make the day go by You're quicker. You're a lot more of a watcher than me though. Yeah, yeah. I don't really have anything. Um, I just have my work. <laughs> yeah, but you are. You are a content creator. Like that's what you are. Like you yeah. are that to people. And I, I've told Ben that a lot. Like Ben is, you know, Ben changes people's days by posting in a positive way. So that's awesome that like you do that. That's the goal. That's guys. the goal. I am only here for your entertainment. I am And to give me money. <laughs> I'm gonna get so much hate for making a joke. <laughs> and to give her money. <laughs> no, this is messing around. I am here at your disposal. What would you like the dancing monkey to do today? <laughs> is that what they'd say? I don't know. <laughs> Um, I but know, yeah, like I've, I felt like that for a while. Like I gave my life to this, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like I get, it's like a give oh, and take yeah. because I get the dream, you know what I mean? But then I have to be, I also have to battle the demons yeah. of like those comments that are just picking apart these infractions of my life that I would never be like, why would someone care about that? Yeah. But like they're invested, I guess, yeah. you know, but like. I get the dream, but I've, I've thrown, I threw my life to the, to the gauntlet of, of YouTube many years ago and I'm completely okay with it. Yeah. Ben's um, so good at it. I wish I was. 
and it, I I absolutely love it. I, there's nothing I love more than what I'm doing. So Zen's awesome. Good job, Bob. Oh, yeah, thanks, I don't know. Man. So like, I have my first fully nuking. I might ask that so I, don't, I didn't feel like looking it up. Um, these are for the next time. Okay, so so you, he has my ideas. Covered your list and yeah, and um, I uh, didn't have a list, but I uh, had a lot of really good things to say, Jordan. Oh, we should film this. It's nice out. Ben. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Sweet. Um, yeah, we have some blend squ- some blend skits in the works. Um, we had some fun stuff coming. So. And as of right now, New Jersey beaches, there's only like one or two uh, towns that are closed. Otherwise, everything is open. No, um, uh, it's South Jersey. What do you mean? South no. Jersey. Everywhere else is pretty much like closed. Yeah, true. But guys, if you're That's gonna, something we can talk about. If you're going to surf, practice social distancing. Do not clog a lineup because we don't want the beaches to get closed. Who knows how long we're going to be um, stuck in this quarantine. And... Uh, most importantly, we don't want to get other people sick. So the CDC says, assume you have it, but don't wear a mask. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I lost you. I thought I was going to be Oh, at the end here we lose I thought I was going to be funny there. No, but... It... Did you throw your back out? No. You fart? No. Your pussy's bleeding? Um. Um. But yeah, like... Stop social. Uh, that's next on next on our podcast. Why are they closing the boardwalks? All right, guys. <laughs> social distance. Keep it safe. Get your sun. Get your exercise in. But make sure you're you're being safe about it. Take your vitamins. Let's go. And leave your comments below. This has been another presentation <laughs> of the Fully Nuking Podcast. Thank you guys for all the stoke. Thank Thanks you for the for love. Listening. Thank you for watching the vlogs. Cue the music. Peace it's out, like, girl scout. No, peace out. Peace out, girl scout. Peace out, girl scout. Peace out, girl scout. What's it called? It's like, da-na-na. Like, what do they say in it? Da-na-na-na-na. And then it's like, tequila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll still be here tomorrow. Oh. Guys. Guess what? If it really is 30 more days, we have 26. Yeah, yeah. 20. <laughs> I was just, I don't know. 26 um, more days. So we love you guys. Fully nuking podcast. It's been really fun to do this. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. You brought. And uh, I know you guys are learning more about us. We'd like to learn more about you. We have, like, we've signed off like 40 times. We have Leave to Leave your how comments to below. Whatever you want to say, say it. Um, we appreciate it. We'll see you next podcast for the dream. Wow. Peace out, Girl Scout. (laughs) Ha ha.